Yes. So, what questions do you have on the homework? No, we're not collecting it right now because half of the class is out on a field trip. Oh, uh, you need a stapler? Are both out? Yeah. Ian, do we have staples over on that desk? Uh, I thought we had staples. Just grab a paper clip for now until we can get the stapler situation resolved. Here we go. Stapler number three, maybe. Bill, do you have a paper? Would you say important? Well, I'm going to say important. Wait, you can grab number 16 on the second page. Can you get minimum of We have started, people. So, what questions did you have on homework? Did you have issues with graphing inequalities, or did you have issues with the linear program? Linear program, all right. Yeah, Nicole. Um, I think it was like the linear program and like the equation part because like finding the vertices, like when you have such a linear graph. Okay, so let's let's practice a few of those, shall we? Yes. What what homework problems would you like to do? Yes, I really said that. What homework problem would you like to do? Oh, you mean I can copy it down on my homework and get credit? I think that's what I just said. And no one wants to do a homework problem. Okay, we don't have to. Twelve. Eighteen. Number eighteen on which section? On the second one. So three, four? Yeah. Three, four. Our delightful linear programming section. Such a happy dappy section. Gives you warm fuzzies all over, doesn't it? Problem number 18. I see it. Uh, I'll erase this. If you will be so kind as to read it off once I have a pen in my hand. All right, Morgan, have at it. Y is less than or equal to X. No, sorry. Wrong way. Y, I know. Y is greater than or equal to 1. And then 2 is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 4. And then Y is greater than or equal to 1 half X plus 2. Does it? You gave me an easy one. Thank you. I thought you were going to give me a killer one. You're breaking us in nice and easy. Well done, Morgan. So, Y is greater... On the last one, we divide by negative 2, which is the same I don't know. This is what I was told. Stop. I didn't ask for people to have the problem that they've worked through. I asked for the original problem. What is the original problem? X minus 2Y is greater than or equal to negative 4. X... X minus 2Y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So this is the way it's written in the book. Okay, then let's do this. Let's graph these one step at a time. When we get here, we'll see what happens. So Y, now we're not going to graph Y is greater than or equal to 1 to start with. We graph the boundary. The boundary is Y equals 1. Y equals 1 is a constant function. What does a constant function look like? Beep. Everybody take your hands out. Go ahead. Why, oh why? Did my little line have to die? Beep. Flat line. Is that linear function? That's a constant function. These are all linear. Well, that's linear. It would be a linear function if it were equals. That would be a linear function. So, flat line. Constant function. Beep. The death line. Why, oh why, did my little line have to And it's not a constant if it's on X. Hmm? It's not a constant if it's on X. It's not called a constant function because it's not a function at that point. Okay. Because I have more than, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Okay. So, now if Y has to be greater than or equal to 1, what part do I shade? Above. Above. Yeah. That was lovely. <laughs> Now, if I look at this, if I just use English, this is that x is between 2 and 4. I know what x is between 2 and 4 means. That is exactly what that is mathematically, right? So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4. And I should label this is my x-axis, my y-axis. So here's x is 2. It's a vertical line. Here's x is 4. And it says x has to be between 2 and 4. What part is that? That's everything that's in between here. 
So what part do I have in common so far? <laughs> um, this is the stuff above y. This is the stuff between x. So I have this little channel right here so far. Now for this one, this is not written in a form that's very useful. Let's rewrite this in slope-intercept form. If I rewrite this in slope-intercept form, I'll move the y over here. So I have 2y. I have x is greater than or equal to 2y minus 4, but I want to have y by itself, so I'll move the 4 over here. I have x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 2y. I want y by itself. y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 2. Did you divide the 2 out in the beginning? If I divided the 2 out in the beginning, I would have to divide by negative 2, and that would switch the direction of the sign. You could do it. I choose, I usually choose, look, if I have to move something around, why would I want to divide by a negative number? You're just asking for trouble, right? So if I look at a problem and I say, oh, look, I can, I can move this over and divide by negative 2, or I can move this over and I can divide by positive 2. I would much rather divide by positive 2, because then I don't run the risk of messing up my sign. So if I can do my order of operations so that I don't ever have to divide by a negative, I do that. Okay. It's just a little trick I've learned over time to help me make sure I don't make dumb mistakes. Could I have? Sure. I could have done it this way. I could have said minus 2y is greater than or equal to, that comes over there as negative, negative x minus 4. Now when I divide by negative 2, I get y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 2, because this negative cancels out those two. Oh look, same thing. But I didn't have to divide by a negative. So, if we make this 1 half x plus 2 equals y, what's my intercept? 2. What's the slope of my line? So I've got to go over 1 and up 2. And now, y is less than, so which way is that? Down. Down. So that's the part below the line here. The only part I hit that's below the line that's already shaded is this part here. Was there an optimized function attached to this? Yes. Um, um, 3y. 3y plus, plus x. Um, minus x. I'm sorry, f of xy equals 3y. Minus x. Add f, add f. Oh, add. Yeah. Yeah, add plus and minus is slightly different. So now I need to know what my corner points are in order to put them in my optimization function, and I have four points. Okay, I know what this point is because this is x equals 2, this is x equals 4. In fact, if I hadn't been lazy, I would have labeled them to start with. It makes life easier. So here x is 2, so this point must be 2, and y is 1. So there's the point 2, 1. Here x equals 4, and y is 1, so this must be the point 4, 1. Here x is 4, so I'll plug 4 into the equation of this line. If I plug 4 in for x, the equation of the line is right here. If I put 4 in, I have 1 half times 4 plus 2 equals y. Looks like 2 and 2 is 4. So it looks like this point up here is 4, 4. This point right here, I have x equals 2. So now I'll put 2 in the line. I have 1 half times 2 plus 2. I get 1 plus 2 is 3. So this is 2 comma 3. So now that I have my four points, I plug them into my optimized function. So, and I'll do, I'll use my space down here. So I need to ask what is f of 2, 1? What is f of 4, 1? What is f of 2, 3? What is f of 4, 4? Well, if I plug 2 plus 1 in, I get 7. If I put 4 in there, I get 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. 
if I plug 2 and 3, and if I plug in 2 here and 3 here, I get 6 and 3 is 9. And then for 4, 4, I get 12 plus 4, 16. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think you put x you put Oh, is it, is it 3 y, y plus x or 3x plus y? Plus y plus x, but you put, you put Oh, for these? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, let's, you know what? We shouldn't write it this way anyways, so we, precisely so we don't make a dumb mistake like that. How about if we write this x plus 3y? And then we're not likely to make dumb mistakes when we plug in, are we? So, thank you. So, two, 2 there and 1 there makes 2 and 3 is 5. 4 and 1 is going to give me 7. 2 and 3 is going to be 11. Yep. And 4 and 4 is going to be 16. That's our max and that's our min. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question. I this was the question I already had before. Yeah. Um, with the x y, can you divide in the very beginning the two y out, and that, like before you put in two my name two y minus x minus four? Okay, so so I'll, let me just erase all the steps. So I'll, I'll erase this. So you want to know when we're back at this stage? Can I just divide by negative two? Yeah. Sure. Was that negative x or positive x? Originally, that's positive x, yes? Yeah. If I divide it by negative 2 here, I get negative 1 half x. I get plus y. So why do you have to divide the x by the other also? Because whatever you do to, if you're going to divide the whole equation by a half, you've got to do everything. So why are we dividing the whole equation? Why are we just dividing each side? That's exactly what I did. If you want, you want to get rid of that minus two, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm just wondering why you so did the x. Listen, you learn more when you listen. If I want to get rid of the negative two, I have to multiply by negative a half. Of course, I can't just add five here because I feel like it. It messes up the inequality. Why? I can't just divide this by two and leave everything else the same. I'm changing the problem. Okay. So. If I'm going to get rid of that minus 2 by multiplying by negative a half, I have to multiply negative a half by everything. Okay. J. Okay. I guess I'm just like mixing Watch. Up. Okay. 3 plus 5 equals 8. Yeah. Right? I can't just come in here and say, I'm going to divide that one by 5 because I feel like it and leave the rest of them the same. Well, then I'll get 3 plus 1 is 8. That doesn't work. If I'm going to do something, I have to divide everything by some number. So if I multiply by a half, that's still true that 3 halves plus 5 halves equals 8 halves because I've done it for the whole thing. You can't just pull out one thing and say, I'll divide that by 2 because I feel like it. Okay. Whatever you do, basic, you know this because this is basic algebra. And I'm just mixing up with the side thing. I don't, you know don't mix it up. Don't mix it up. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. I know, but I'm thinking like I'm thinking I'm thinking like why are you doing it to the entire side? Well, I had to do it to this entire side because I can't just I can't just operate on that. I can't just divide that by two and leave everything alone. Okay. You gotta do it to everything. Questions? Good enough? No, you know. Hey. Everybody makes dumb mistakes in math. The issue isn't whether or not you're going to make dumb mistakes. The issue is whether when you see the dumb mistake, you're going to say, oh yeah, now I remember and move on. Okay. If you argue about why doing it wrong is actually the right way, then you're just reinforcing the bad way of doing something. You want to do that. So when somebody says, no, that's the incorrect way to do it, you want to erase from your brain the wrong part rather than argue that it's the right part. I wasn't trying to argue. I was trying to understand. Gotcha. Um, I have some problems with 22. You have some problems with 22? Really? That's terrible. <laughs> All right, would someone read off problem 22 as it is printed in the book, please? Y is less than or equal to 7 minus x. Ooh. 
3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 6. Uh, x is greater than or equal to 0. And y is greater than or equal to 0. And the, and the formula is fxy equals 5x minus 2y. Okay, so why don't we start with the easy ones? What's the easiest of the easiest? Zero. And the cheesiest of the cheesiest? These two. Just these two tell us what? What part of the graph are we on? On the left. On the left. Oh, We're on right. quadrant one. I'm not even going to graph those because all I would do is draw the x and y axis, right? So we're just going to remember that we're in the first quadrant. So they're graphed. That was nice. Well, yeah, it didn't have to be. It could have been something over here and over here. And well. Okay, so now let's put these two in, in slope-intercept form. Is this in slope-intercept form? Sure. The only thing I would do to make it easier to look at, I might rewrite it as y equals negative x plus 7, only because we're used to putting mx first. But that's easy. How about this one? Okay. I, I, I can divide everything by negative 2. I prefer to move it over so I don't have to mess with changing the sign. So I'd be inclined to say 3x. Um, I'm going to move the two. Way. I'm going to move the two y over here. I'm going to move the six over here. Yes. And then I divide by two. So what I basically have is, and you know what? I'm going to move. I'm going to move these two over this way just so we have room to work over here. So I have y equals negative x plus 7. And for this one, this is y equals 3 halves x minus 3. And I'm going to, this is the y was greater than or equal to, so I'll just put that that way, just so I remember. So far, so good? So, I've got these two graphed already, so let's graph these two. I'm going to graph the line y equals negative x plus 7, so my intercept is 7. Intercept is 7, and the slope is negative 1. So the line's like that. This one, the intercept is negative 3. And the slope is 3 halves. So the slope, oh, I boogered this. Bad, Pastor. Slope was negative. You should have all said, Pastor, the slope's negative. Positive slopes go this way. What are you doing? It's negative slope. It goes this way. That's better. Now let's label that. Now, we've got one at negative 3, and the slope is 3 halves, which means I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 2. So we got this mess. Okay? So now let's go back and look for this one. Y is less than 7 minus X. So does 0, 0 work in here? Yeah. yeah, that's this line here. This is the line y equals negative x plus 7. So that means everything south of the line is being shaded, right? Okay. Now for this one, when we figured this one out, one out we got y is greater than 3 halves x minus 3. Yes? So... If we go back to, this is our line here, I shaded the wrong line. You people are not helping at all, because I am totally boogering this today, and you just let me get away with murder. No, you shaded the right line, you yeah. just wrote the wrong yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes me happier. Wait a second, yep, this one goes over here. It would be good to label well. 
And over here, let's go y equals 3 halves x. Can you understand, please? Okay. Now, in this one, it was y was greater than. So which way is y greater than? Up here. I can also plug 0, 0 in. If I plug 0, uh, 0 in, I get 0 is greater than minus 3. Is that true? Yep, so this point is in the solution set, so it's everything up here. Now remember, remember, we already graphed these two conditions, which say we have to be in quadrant one. So I've got everything up here, everything down here in quadrant one, so what I get is this. Well, some of the vertices are pretty easy. That one's 0, 7. That's nice. That one's 0, 0. That's pretty nice. That one is 2, 0. That's pretty nice. Now, my graph, this one looks like this happens at about 4, 4, but I don't know if that's true, so we'll need to check it. I've got, I've got the equation y equals 3 halves x minus 3. So I'm just going to use substitution to solve this. Since they're already both equal to y, I can just use substitution. It's going to be easier than multiplying that by 3 and that by 2. So I'll just say, right here I'll say, all right, this equals this. 3 halves x minus 3 has to equal negative x plus 7. If I bring the x over to this side, this is 2 halves, 2 over 2. That makes 5 halves x equals, I'll bring the minus 3 over to that side and it becomes plus. If I bring minus 3 over there, I get 10. So 5x equals 20. So x equals 4. Hey, that's exactly what my graph said. That's actually drawn pretty well to scale. So if x is 4, if I put 4 here, y must be 3. Well, so it's not exactly drawn to scale. I would have guessed 4, 4. This is the point 4, 3. Now I've got my four points. What do I do with them? Put them in here. So, and I think 0, 7 is going to be our winner. Nope. That's going to be our minimum. So, 0, 7. 0, 7 equals... F of 0, comma, 0. you got to love 0, 0. And why do we love 0, 0 when it's in the same always a zero. It almost always gives us a 0, doesn't it? That's just so nice. F of 4, 3. And F of 2, 0. And I'll try to move this out of the way so you can all see down there also. So F of 0, 7. If I put 0 here and 7 here, negative 14. If I put 4 here and 3 here, I get 20 minus 6, positive 14. If I put in 2, 0, I get 10 here and nothing there. What is my minimum? 3, 7. What is my maximum? Good? Good. You all like this? Mm -hmm. Like it better now? Now. Just graph it. Graph it on. Paper. What kind of paper? Graph paper. It's amazing when you do this on graph paper. If I graph this on graph paper, I wouldn't even have to figure out where they cross. You can just look. Graph it on graph paper. Save yourself the hassle. Then you're not like, where does it intersect? Oh gosh, I have to figure this out algebraically because my graph isn't to scale. Graph it on. Which one? <laughs> on on three three. No, which graph paper? Number twenty on three three. Yes. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Yes. This is number twenty on three three. I had a couple of other people ask me. I'll I'll use this board over here. By the way, this problem problem number twenty comes to you from Liv and Amanda. Enjoy.
Did y'all take a quick look at it? They did that problem and they did it correctly. Quick look, because I'm letting you erase it. Ah! Just go on once. Go on twice. I'm destroying your artwork. How do you feel about this? You don't care. You don't care. Oh, I'm destroying this beautiful piece of art and you don't care and you created it? It's like slaying your children. Oh. That's a bit hard. Oh. Come here, little child. Okay, so is the absolute value of x and the absolute value of y, and what were which way did the sign go? I don't remember. It's less than or equal to three. This one's less than or equal to three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's greater than one. Okay. Oh, just greater than. Oh, just strictly greater than. Thank you. Here's x and y. So happy. So when we have the absolute value of x, we learned to rewrite this by saying minus 3 is 3 greater than or equal to negative 3. We can just rewrite it like this. Is it coming back? Yeah. So x is between what? x is between, say it again. Negative 3 and 3. Just think common sense logic. x is between. So is it out here at 4? No. Is it here at 27? No. In negative 500? No. Oh, no. it's between 3 and minus 3. So we go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. That's negative 3. That's positive 3. Nice vertical lines. Well, one, two, three, that right? So, so far, so far I'm in here, yeah? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Okay, now... Y is absolute value of Y is greater than equal to 1. And I showed you a cheaty way to do this. What was the cheaty way I showed you to do this? Or Yeah, this is an or statement because I can put negative 1 over here and greater than that. And I go, is negative 1 greater than 1? No, cannot write it this way. That makes no math sense. So this is actually negative 1 greater than Y or Y is greater than 1. So I can't leave it written like that because that's terrible. That's bad math. Okay, so y has to be less than minus 1. Okay, what kind of line is y equals minus 1? Do I need to, do we need to put our hands on our hands? Yeah. No, no, okay. So I told you if I made you do that, you'd remember. I haven't had any trouble since I forced people to put their hands on their heads and say, why or why is my little line dot? All of a sudden, people think it's much cooler to remember that a constant function is a flat line. Now, it's strictly greater than, so we're just going to go ahead and dot that right now. And I have y equals 1 is up here. Okay, Morgan, now which way am I going to shade? I'm going to shade up and down. So I'm going to do nice sneak. God bless you. I'm going to go up there, and I'm going to go down here. So what's my shaded part? My shaded part, this line is solid. And this, and then I'm going to go up here. This one is solid up here. The bottom is dotted, and then so it's these two chunks. So, Ryan, yep. I cannot put this on the calculator. Right? The calculator will not show this. Well, um, maybe. There is, and the, the inequalities adds on an x equals menu that's not normally there and you can put in a line x equals I've never actually used it much so I don't know if it works properly but this would be an example of why it's good to know how to do it manually and I don't know what a cast I don't know if a casio could do that or not. no shading no shading huh oh that's too bad should have gotten a ti <laughs> yes so I think it's actually have two regions have either side for sure uh, is this surprising to you? Is this surprising? What if, what if I asked you this? What if I said, what if I said y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x? We know what that is. It looks like 
that, yeah? So far so good, and since y is less than it's all this, right? So then, what if I did, uh, two regions. Oh, what if I did, uh, y is greater than or equal to, uh, let me go this way. Uh, nope, that one's greater than less than or equal to, less than or equal to, oh, I was still going to make one thing, I was going to draw like something like that. Oh, uh, that just gives you one section in the center. Yeah, sometimes you get two regions. Like if you had a circle, we're going to do this later. I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with one that you guys know besides this. If you do something like a circle, if I if I had you graph a circle, and I had you graph a hyperbola, something like that, you can get this area in here and this area in here, or this area in here and this area in here, or these areas out here, all kinds of weird stuff. So it's possible to have it's possible to have regions that are separated. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that in chapter eight. But yeah, that's 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 pretty normal actually. So are we good? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Young, are you happy? Mm. He was shaking his head. No, he was saying no. He wasn't happy. You're not happy because you want to go to lunch. That's why you're not happy. That doesn't count. He's dying to get out and see what fun activities we're going to have here at homecoming. So what are they doing today, anyway? Tug of war. Oh, Yong is excited about the tug of war. Yeah. He's going to stare down the enemy. He'll scare him to death. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. You can turn in three, four next time. Oh, I No, don't get me. <laughs> Just turn in three, three, and three, four together next time. I was going to grade them, but I decided, nah, that doesn't make sense. The other people are here. Some of them are going to watch the video to figure out what they did wrong. Just forget it. It's homecoming week. Your brains are elsewhere. These people are off campus because it's another good excuse to not do work. So just forget it. We'll just do it next week. So if you have more questions on three, four, you come and see me. Uh, are the rest of us pretty good with 3-4? We're okay with this? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Great, so now we can move on to 3-5, which is the last section. Oh, this is the bomb. Repeat after me, the bomb. Oh, you don't sound like you're convinced. And stop waving at the camera. You're not on, like, CBS or something at a football game. Is my head getting in the way? How big is Daniel's head? This is an interesting question. Correct. <laughs> Shade in the region, shaded by Daniel's head. And I'll just I'll put all the answers down here. I'll look at the camera and I'll put So the answer is Lou Daniel! They'll totally want to kill you when they get back. I'll say the answer is, but I won't say it out loud. I'll just write it down over here where your head's going. Is that cool? That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Well, today we're doing three by three systems of equations, and don't you love it? The answer is? Yes. Yes. Now we have three variables and three equations. So far, what have we been having? Two variables and two, two equations. Now we're going to have three and three. Kind of fun. Now, when you have three variables, x, y, and z, what shape does that make? Oh, it does not make a triangle. Does that make a square? It does not make a circle. If you look in your book on page 138, instead of guessing, you would know what shape it makes. Perhaps it's not a triangle. It's an unbounded region. Yes, actually, it is an unbounded region. Oh, yes. What does it make? A plane. If you do x, y, and z, you get a plane. So here's a plane. It's a very attractive plane. It's an orange plane. Hold this, please, because I don't have enough hands. There is a plane. Now, the question is, we're going to take three planes uh -oh. and start making them intersect. In other words, crash. Big fire, people die. Oh, well. Okay, so 
this is three dimensional, which is why I'm using the paper. So these planes, I'm having these planes intersect. The question is, what different ways could they intersect? Now we saw with lines, actually before I had you do this, what were the ways that if you have two lines that are on a plane, what are the different possibilities? You can either have them be parallel, no intersection. And how do you know when lines are parallel? Same, same slope, different y-intercept, right? And what do we call that? What kind of system of equations is that? Inconsistent. Parallel lines are inconsistent because inconsistent means no answer. You don't get an answer because the lines never cross. Then I can have the lines intersect at exactly one point. We call that consistent because consistent means I get at least some answer. And I know that they intersect because my slopes are different. If my two lines have different slopes, they must intersect. Absolutely, positively guaranteed. Are you still with me? Hold that thought, young man. The third one is same line. If I have the same line, what do I know about their slopes? They're dependent, good. They're consistent, because you have an answer, lots of them. And they're dependent because it's the same line. How do you know you have the same line? Same slope, same, same, slope, same intersect. That's when they just take one equation and like multiply it by three and move the pieces around so it looks different. Same line. If you have the same equation, consistent and dependent. If you have the same slope, different intercept, they're parallel, inconsistent. If you have different slopes, they must cross. So we have no points of intersection, one point of intersection, infinite number of intersection points, right? Now we're doing it with three variables. Dum, 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 dum. There's my plane. Yes, sir. Um, in order for it to be consistent with the three lines, do all three have to be intersecting? Or just two? Let's find out. Okay. I know, it's tough being patient, isn't it? Yes. Here we go. I take these planes. Ready? Oh, using my ninja math powers. How many points of intersection? Zero. No points of intersection. That was amazing. Give it up for the ninja plane master. Thank you. Very good. Now I take. <laughs> now I take my. Now I take my two planes. Right. Oh. Now where are they meeting? Now, if you look, hold it up high so you can see, not just one point, look. They're meeting right along this line. See how they're all intersecting in the, like this? So in this case, because they're all meeting, this one's coming like this, this one's hitting right there, the other one's hitting right there, they're all meeting along here, they're all meeting at a line. Can you see? I could have, and there's actually a pretty good picture of that. If you look on page 138 in the upper right, but those you, are colliding planes, not colliding lines. Yes, but what do you? What's the intersection? A line. Okay. So I have the three planes coming together, and they intersect at a line. How many solutions do I have? Infinite, because I got a line, infinite, right? And then here comes the last ninja. Where do they all intersect? Just at that one little point right there. And if you look up at the corner of the room, it's actually easier to see. You can look up at any corner over here. Look, I've got a plane this way and a plane this way. And the roof is a plane where they meet. Just one little point. What are the three possible ways that planes can intersect? My gosh, it was exactly the same as with two lines. Now, you would expect it would. At least I would, because we've gone to three dimensions. I would think, wow, it must be different, right? No? Same thing. By the way, I showed you the example with the three parallel planes that there are no points of intersection in common. I could have these intersecting and still have no point in common. What if I do the TP thing? There's no point that all three planes intersect, is there? These two points, these two planes intersect here, these two intersect here, these two intersect up here, but they don't have anything in common. So there are lots of ways you can have planes crossing one another where you still don't have an answer. So the cool thing is, even with planes, you get the same number of points of intersection, the same possibilities as we had with lines. Zero points, one point, or they cross all in a line, infinite points. Pretty trippy.
Are we going to use isometric paper to graph this? No. We will not be doing that, Jay. Instead, we will be using our brains. Oh. <laughs> so, if you take a look, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to have an equation, and I'll put an equation, a triple equation on the board. And we do these, by the way. When we solve triples, we usually do it by elimination. Well, at least for this section, because next section I'll show you how to do it with matrices. Do you have to call it Z or do we just call it Z axis? I prefer to call it Z because I'm not British. Okay. If you want to call it Z, you can go ahead and we'll all know what you mean. Okay. So, let's take a look. I don't want to use the, what the book he has. I'm going to put a new problem on the board. Let's do 5X plus 3Y. 5X plus 3Y. Plus 2z equals 2. And by the way, you should all have some idea how to do this because you will recall at the end of last school year, I lovingly came in to Mr. Petke's class and we had fun doing this, remember? It was such a good day. I had warm fuzzies and cuddlies for a week after that. Yes. All the rest of you were cowering. You couldn't understand that time. Oops. X plus 4Y plus 2Z. So we're going to solve this, and we're going to use the elimination method. Now, when we use the elimination on 2 by 2s, you remember what we did? We tried to get our equation so that we could get one of the variables to drop out. Yes? So let's do that here. I've got Xs, I've got Ys, and I've got Zs. Which one looks to you like it'd be the easiest one to knock out? Z. To me, it looks like Z would be the easiest to knock out, don't you think? So now what we have to do is we have to choose our one equation that we'll use to eliminate the Z's in the other two equations. So we've got to choose that first. If you don't do that, you keep mixing up because you keep using the same equations different ways. You're like, this isn't working. You have to be systematic about this. So you start out and say, okay, which one is going to be my initial equation? That I'm going to use for both of them. The bottom one. The bottom one. That would not be my choice, but that's not a bad choice. That'll work. That'll work just fine. Morgan has That'll spoken. Work. We must do as she commands. <laughs> so Morgan says, this is going to be the one I'm going to use. So I'm just going to put a little star here so I remember that I'm going to use that with this and that with this, with both of them. So what I do is I'm going to write out both of these. I'm going to say 5x. 5x plus 3y plus 2z equals 2. And I chose this bottom one, so I'll write it out. x plus 4y plus 2z equals 16. Okay, that's my first set of equations. Now I'm going to write out my second set of equations on this side. 2x plus y minus z equals negative 5. And x plus 4y plus 2z equals 16. Now, notice if I put my little star there, I remember to use that same equation twice. I wrote it out here and here because that's the equation I'm going to use to eliminate from those two. So now this is looking pretty good for eliminating z because I've got 2z and I've got a 2z. What you could do is you could just put parentheses around this and subtract. I do not like subtracting. I find when I subtract, I'm more likely to make errors, so I add. I always add whenever I can. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. Watch how easy that is. Negative, 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 negative. Now, because I have negatified everything, I can just add. And I won't make a dumb mistake. I won't have any double negatives floating around anywhere. So if I add my x's, what do I get? Don't be bashful, what do I get? 4x. That was not bad. If I add my y's, what do I get? Negative y, because that's smaller than that, equals, I add this, what do I get? Minus 14. Woohoo! One done. So now I'm going to go over here. What do I need to do to make these two right so I can knock out my z? Y. No. 
to yeah, this is this is squished just a little bit. Just to rewrite this so it's a little bigger because it's probably a little hard to see from where you are. We're kind of small. Okay, so what do I do to the top equation? If I multiply it by two, it'll give me negative two, and I can just add. That's brilliant. So we'll make this four four x plus two y minus two z is minus ten. When I add my x's, what do I get? When I add my y's, what do I get? When I add my z's, when I add my numbers, six. Woohoo! Now look. Now I have two equations and two unknowns. Why? Because I got rid of one of the variables. I started with three variables in each equation, but I knocked out one of the variables. So since I knocked out one of the variables, now I'm down to a two by two. So I take these guys. I'm going to take these guys, and I'm going to copy them. I'm going to go this. So that's phase one. Phase one complete. Now we're going on to phase two. So I write down 4x minus y equals negative 14. I write down 5x plus 6y equals positive 6. And now I say... What variable do I want to knock out? And we must ask Morgan, because when Morgan speaks, we must act. At least today. <laughs> Morgan, what variable shall we eliminate? Y. Why do you want to eliminate Y? <laughs> yeah, oh, look. I, could, I have a choice. I could either multiply this by 6 and knock out Y. Or I'm going to have to multiply the top by 5 and the bottom by minus 4 or something. Who wants to do that? So I'm going to multiply the top by 6. And just to keep things clean, I'm going to move over this way with both of them. So I'll say 24x. I'll say minus 6y. Ooh, 6 times 14. 60 and 24. And they all said... Now do you see what I did? We've done this before, so hopefully this doesn't this isn't new. I'll just copy this guy down. 5x plus 6y equals 6. And now da, 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 da. I add them. Are you still with us, Sabrina? Yes. Good. What do I get here? 29x. The y's go away mercifully. What do I get here? Negative 78. So now I ask myself, how many times does negative 29x go into negative 78? The answer is, I don't know, that looks weird. I wonder if we did something wrong. Mm. I think this is supposed to come out a nice number. No, it's true. That's right. Life is not fair. Life is not fair, that's right. <laughs> that is very true. So, it's minus yeah, I don't think it's supposed to come out a nasty number. We may have made a boo-boo somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. I think. Let me see if the book says that. I think. I think that this problem was actually pre-raised. Five x plus three y plus two z equals two. Two y two x minus plus y minus z equals. Oh. Right here, I copied the problem down wrong. No. It's supposed to be positive 5. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, ah! Which actually is a really good lesson. Whenever you copy something out of the book, what's the first thing you always do? Check, Check the equations, because if you blow it there, you're done. So actually, that is probably the right answer. Bummer, because I wanted to give you a nice, easy first problem. Oh, well, we'll just run with it. So x equals <laughs> negative 2 point... Six, eight, nine, six, five, five, eight, seven, eight. Six, eight, nine. Great. Now what we do is now that we know what x is, we take x and we back substitute it in here. 
by plugging x back in here, I get a nice number. Well, not so nice. It's going to be 12 point something. And then I can figure out what y is. And then what? So I figure out what y is. I take x and y and I plug it back in here. And I figure out what z is. That's how you do it. Shall we actually try one that works out? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Bad. Yeah. The three equations we don't need to use only one for twice, right? We can use any one of them, right? You choose any one you want and use it for two. So, and I'll tell you what the answers are going to be. Actually, using some more magic. It took me a second. Yes. So I'm just going to recycle this. <laughs> why, why? Do you know how to like tell it that a variable is not an actual number? That a variable is not a number. Well, do you know how to tell it that, that like instead of it's just signing like x as 10, that we go to that automatically, you know? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking, Jay. I'm, I'm working on it, but I'm not sure I, I know. Wait, it's going to be 2x. 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 Y, if you're interested, for your notes, Y equals 3.24 and Z equals 2.86. It would have just been better if I would have checked that to begin with. But it's nice to know we did it correctly. Do you know how to put in a system of equations on this calculator without the Absolutely. Without the other keypad? Oh, no. I know how to do it with the keypad. Yeah. Okay. So when you find the keypad, yeah, the first thing Yes. Yeah. Chris asked a good question. He said, basically, without saying it faster, you stopped at this point, and you didn't show me how to do the rest of the problem. You just told me. Show me how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to show Chris how to do it. I can choose either of these equations. Which one looks nicer? I'm liking this one because it's got a 5 in it instead of a 24, right? Okay, so we said we came out with 2.689, right? So what we do is we say 5, we plug it in 5 times 2.689 plus 6y has to equal 6. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do it. I just wonder if like, you go back to the one you used before. The you 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 have to plug into one of these two to get your second one. Then once you get the two variables, you choose any one of these three and plug it. Good. Yeah. Okay. So let's try one. Do you guys get the process? Would you like to try one? Yeah. I'll actually take one out of the homework that I know has an answer, and I'll let you look at it out of the book so I don't miscopy it on the board again. Take a look at. Take a look at problem number 17. Problem number 17 uses R, S, and T. Give that a try. What you doing, Jay? You're erasing something? Yeah, I don't know if that should make me nervous or not. Should that make me nervous? No. No, okay. I thought maybe it should. What is it doing? We are looking at problem number 17 on page 142. By the way, this is the last chapter in the section. We're going to have a, quiz, a test in two days. Wait, is this part of the homework? Good. In two days. Oh, is 17 part of the homework? No. That's a practice problem for you to do. 17 on page... Problem number 17 on 142. And I like if we solving this, you wouldn't have to show us that, but just put the on the answer. Of course you have to show your step. What kind of dumb question is that? No, it's a, it's like in a test. It depends. We'll discuss that later. Because I think the test is pretty small. You just to give you an extra piece of paper and show your work. I'm like, real up. Excuse me. Oops, excuse me. Excuse me. 
How's it going, Liv? Nice. Oops, excuse me. Let's see you laugh. Mr. Mr. Mm-hmm. I just noticed your ring hat and you can take it off. I didn't. It was my turn thing. It's well, she's not here. It's all right because we're teaching her. That's why you want to do it. No, son. You think I fell off the pumpkin truck on the way into... Okay. Next chapter, I'm going to show you guys how to do this with your calculator using matrices. So all these guys think they're real smart. They're like, oh, well, it's too hard to write the steps down. So, because, like, you know, there's not enough space. So we can just put the answer right. It's like, you think I'm stupid? You just told me you know how to do it with your calculator. Nice try, Bradley. No. I'll be looking extra hard at your work to make sure that everything's marked up and you're not cheating. No. no. Calculator. Calculators can solve systems of equations like that. Only we can use it on the exam. On the test, you're going to have to show me your work. Yeah. So if you just put down the answer, I'm going to mark it wrong. But we can check it. On the How can I prevent you from checking it unless I took your calculator away? Of course, you can check it. Yeah. You have to show me your stats. And then people do dumb things like thinking I won't check their work. They'll put the right answer down and they can't get it, so they just like try to fudge the math somewhere. It's like, no, no, no. Then I take two points off for trying to cheat. So I don't get smart, Sunny boy. Can you do the negative thing when you make everything negative? Then you add it, right? You add it together? One plus two. Yes. Okay. Because I'm adding a positive and a negative and they cancel. When I was your age, our only option was to do the stuff by hand. I always do stuff by hand. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not. Okay, with calculator. I just know this stuff. Yeah, this is an augmented matrix. The, the program on the TI does the same thing. In my college class, linear algebra class, we had a take home final. And the final was here are 10 equations and 10 variables. You have three days to solve it. Good luck. We had to do it by hand. We can have. I was one of two people that got the answer here. Yeah. Took me it, uh, to do the.